When you draft a quarterback early, you're making a promise. A promise that you'll do your absolute best to put them in a position to succeed. The Bears made that commitment to Justin Fields last April, trading up from the 21st pick to the 11th pick to grab the talented signal caller from Ohio State. But so far, with just one year in the books, they've broken that promise. Absolute ineptitude throughout the offensive structure means any forthcoming criticism or praise must be taken with the big grain of salt. But let's get one thing straight. Bears fans have every right to be mad over the way their 2021 season was handled. With the risk of sounding superfluous, it's difficult to find a way in which the coaching staff did not fail Justin Fields. From play calling, to talent evaluation, to overall roster construction, the Bears continually put hurdles in the way of Fields' development that could potentially have long-lasting impacts on his career. This opening series to start the Bucks game shows just how off-base they were. Very first play of the game here, so the staff have had all week to plan and coach what this is going to be. Running the ball makes a lot of sense with the rookie QB, and the Bears call a quick pitch left. Now, there's no problem with the actual play design here. It's a perfectly serviceable designed outside run. But the lack of understanding of their own personnel is truthfully outstanding. Now this is not to rag on Jason Peters, but he should not be used in space. The 39-year-old and former All-Pro was maybe the Bears' best lineman last season. But to say he's lost a step is being generous. I mean, come on, he's 39 and he's coming off of a training camp where he sat half the time for his bad knees. Again, not a knock on him personally, just the stupidity of using him in this way. If this was week two, maybe we could forgive it, but this was week seven. Come on, Nagy. However, Peters doesn't even get a chance to get beaten in space, as despite practicing this play all week, Mooney somehow forgets his responsibility is to block up to the second level, leaving the end for Komet coming in motion. 33 comes streaking through, and Peters doesn't have the foot speed nor turning ability he once had to stop this. Want to know what actual good coaching and personnel scouting looks like? Well, you only need to roll through to the very next play. Todd Bowles, who is a fantastic defensive coordinator, has seen Peters' limitations in foot speed this season, choosing to bring the safety blitz over Fields' blindside. Shaq Barrett adds insult to injury, whipping him with the speed rush inside, and now, Fields has two guys about to crunch him without him seeing either one of them. And this lack of understanding of personnel was persistent throughout the season. One of the good ways they use Fields, and we'll come back to this in the next section, is on role action plays. But why you're trying to do naked bootleg towards TJ Watt is truthfully beyond us. Any coach that watched the Steelers over the last two seasons has seen the adjustment to more five down lines and an increase in wide nine rushers coinciding with TJ Watt as the lead dog. So why are you allowing him to go free? You have plenty of options in your playbook to run this without leaving him unblocked. It just seems like poor coaching. If the NFL PA lawyers see this Nagy, they come in straight after you for that insurance money. The lack of awareness of own personnel again appeared in how he was used as a runner. There seemed to be a lack of overall creativity in how he was being utilized despite the clear ideology to run the football. Justin carried the ball a total of 72 times last season over his 12 appearances, and on paper, this appears like he was heavily involved. But removing scrambles, fumbles, and kneel downs brings that total to just 16, with only five of these being direct QB runs, two of which were sneaks. Now, this is even more confusing when you think that this is his second snap of his NFL career. There's clear indication that they know he can run, they just ran away from it. And if you're going to claim injuries scared them off, well then how can you, with any confidence, place him behind such a dreadfully built offensive line? And that brings us to our next problem, roster construction. Now, we're talking purely the offensive side of the ball here, but the talent surrounding Justin Fields was just awful. The line was an abject mess all year long, giving up a league-leading 58 sacks and continuously failing to open up holes. And when there was time for Fields, the weapons let him down too, failing to get themselves open and dropping crucial conversions on downs over and over and over again. Second-year standout Darnell Mooney shone brightest, 
but Fields never managed to get on the same page with the injury-hampered Allen Robinson. Tight end Cole Komet was the only other pass catcher to reach 500 yards. Abhorrent coaching and roster construction like this doesn't go unnoticed, and Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace were belatedly relieved of their duties after the season ended. A brand new regime should see Fields used in a much more creative manner, and hopefully a great understanding of how to use their personnel overall. However, the talent deficiency hasn't really changed after a full offseason. Now, with that caveat out of the way, it's time to talk about what we did like in Justin's game. First and foremost is the arm talent. Generating immense zip on the ball, Fields can hit any spot on the field in his sleep. Particularly strong at driving the ball to the outside, Fields can throw these on a rope, leaving corners with no chance to play the ball. He's quick to identify the Packers cover four here, and the ball's on the money for Mooney to cut his route into. And as we like to drive home here at Thinking Football, the touch pass is the hardest skill of them all, and Fields has this in abundance, always looking to drop it right into the bucket. Here against the Lions, he's again going to go to his favorite man, Mooney, getting this out as soon as Darnell gets even, rainbowing it right over the shoulder to where only his boy can get it. This time it's off the play action, and he's got to be even more precise to squeeze it up the middle against the cover one. Watch the touch on the ball, getting up and over the trailing back, right into the basket of Jimmy Graham before Mika can get there. Hey, and he was getting lit up too. And here it is again while getting rocked, but this time on the move. The flat defender locks his eyes onto Fields, taking his eyes off Mooney's wheel route. Spotting this, Fields throws up another rainbow with an even higher difficulty level. As we mentioned earlier, the one way we liked how he was being used was on the roll, with Fields particularly excelling on flood concepts. Here against Minnesota, he correctly reads that the deep option isn't on with the safeties dropping way back, and as soon as the corner shows the slightest of movements to play the flat option, he rifles the ball between the zones to Mooney in the middle. You perhaps want to see him anticipate and maybe throw this a little earlier, but great reaction to the bite down and nice zip to put it on his man. Cranking the difficulty up on this one, Fields is going to go and choose the deep option. Despite Mooney running his route to the wrong spot and allowing the flat to drop and disrupt, the throw is just too damn good right to the sideline with velocity to where only Robinson can get it. And Fields even showed a great ability to, to do this rolling left. In fact, Fields showed a fantastic ability to throw rolling to his left overall, both with set feet and on the move. This ambidextrous roll ability is a fantastic weapon when paired with a coordinator who knows how to take advantage of it, sending defenses scrambling away from their ingrained run fits and making the secondary cover all 53 and a half yards laterally. Now, despite the praise, Fields struggled mightily his rookie season, even when accounting for everything around him. His biggest problem is target locking. He's a magnet eye aficionado, staring down receivers right off the snap, waiting far too long. And honestly, this just ain't gonna fly in the NFL. This is a great read from Rasul Douglas, but it's aided by Fields' eyes. Same concept we looked at early with the deep out against an off safety. But on this one, we're on the far hash, so this time the ball's got to be out quicker and flatter. Fields does neither and compounds the issue by locking onto his man from the snap. Driving the ball across the field like this, you've got to try to hold the secondary with your eyes. NFL corners are just too quick if they recognize what you're doing. You can see the Hall of Fame badge stare down even stronger on this play action. Allen Robinson is the first option here, running an 18-yard spot route with Komet wheeling up the sideline if the safety bites down. The Niners play this fantastically, with number one carrying the wheel as part of his flat responsibilities in the cover three. And the linebackers don't bite at all, allowing Fred Warner to drop and cut off the hook. Watch Fields after he gets his eyes back around. His first look is to Robinson, but without the bite, Warner is directly in the way. Fields should move on to the wheel, and then in turn to the checkdowns in the flat but Fields locks on to Robinson for a full two seconds, then forces it. Overall, 
he's just been too slow processing defenses, even with some easy concepts. 35 gets wide to make sure he has the flat against the two-man concept. 23 carries as part of the cover three, so Fields has an easy hitch here to Robinson, but he shoots for the moon instead. And here's an even more routine throw. Back to basics with the sprint right option here on third down, and the rub design means Mooney is wide open on the first and really only read, but Fields just holds on. We praised his scramble mode earlier, and while it's definitely impressive from a running aspect, he has a nasty habit of lowering his eyes during improvisation. On multiple occasions, he shook himself loose from the chaos of the Bears' backfield, but instead of keeping his eyes upfield and making the defense pay, he looked at the linebacker and tried to find a way to juke him. His pocket presence in general was also noticeably sketchy, but with how horrific that blocking was, it was pretty difficult to gain a judgment on it. So, what to make of Justin Fields' rookie season? Well, truthfully, not a lot. It's true that for large parts of his campaign, he did not look like an NFL quarterback, but the coaching and play around him was so poor, we're not even sure that you can make a fair judgment on it. The arm talent and movement make you see why any coach would go to bat for him, but the lack of awareness from the pocket and slow eyes gives you hesitations. If he can be utilized in the right way, and if being blindsided all rookie season hasn't gotten to him, Justin Fields certainly has all the physical tools needed to be starting quarterback for many years to come. But if they keep failing around him, most aren't good enough to raise the sinking ship. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. We'll be back in two weeks' time for our last rookie report. Season's almost here, y'all.